Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. And of course, first hour on Wednesday, the Roosh Foundation, we have Harley Schlanger back. Harley, uh, the title, I guess, of this uh, hour talk, considering that the Senate has a, quote, deal between the Republicans and Democrats, a kind of a dual surrender. It's not just a surrender, but it's a disaster in many ways. I want you to tell us the title of what you call this, the deal that will dot, dot, dot. The deal that will kill us. Tell us why. Tell, tell us why it's going to kill us. And, of course, uh, uh, they probably will try to introduce it to the House of Representatives splitting the Republican Party between the Tea, Tea Party uh, conservatives and uh, the uh, people that are willing to kind of bend. But really, the, neither party is dealing with the real issues, are they? Yeah, let me, let me just start with that, because you have Democrats who claim that they're going to try and defend their constituents who, if they go along with Obama, are going to cast their constituents into a dung heap, into a dustbin. Now, on the other side, you have Republicans who, in the name of free trade, are protecting Wall Street, and they're protecting the swindlers and the banksters. So when the Tea Party and the mainstream Republicans say they're standing for principle, less government, so on and so forth, uh, they're not taking on the real problem. And the president, of course, is not going to take on the real problem because he is the real problem. He's run he's, by he's, Wall Street. Right. He's a Wall Street guy. guy. He's, he's really yeah. not a communist like he, a lot of people try to claim he was. He's a corporatist. He's a Wall Street bankster puppet uh, uh, a collaborator. Yeah, fascist. Yeah. And now, basically and the, fusion, the fusion of corporate uh, America, international corporations, what we call the transnational corporations and government, is the definition, and this is right from Benito Mussolini, the definition of fascism. Exactly, and, and here's where you have the real problem. This whole shutdown and this whole debt ceiling crisis is a fraud. They knew they were going to eventually reach a deal. The terms for this were dictated not from the rank and file, the population that's angry at, at uh, bank uh, bailouts and angry at Obamacare. It's all coming from Wall Street from both sides. In the midst, what just the day before this crisis started, the leading CEOs of the leading two big to fail banks, including Deutsche Bank, which is not even an American bank, were at the White House to tell Obama what to do. And what they said is get a deal done, and the deal should include continuing bailouts and bail ins, number one, and number two, brutal austerity, and number three, no glass steagle. And that's what Obama's terms have been from the beginning. And right. In fact, uh, Obamacare is part of the austerity program, isn't it? Sure it is, because what Obamacare is doing is it's driving up insurance rates. It's, dri it's going to drive up medical costs. The only reason costs as a whole will drop is because you won't be able to get the procedures you need. Mm, uh, it's right. an insurance bailout. It's a corporatist protection of the insurance industry. Now, here's the other thing that no one's talking about. We have the most fragile situation in the banking and financial sector ever. This makes September 2008 or October 1929 look like normal days of prosperity. Because what we're about to have happen is the whole house of cards is going to come tumbling down. Now, had there been a default, and you know, there still may be, someone still may muck this thing up, but I, I think it probably won't happen. They'll probably get the deal done. But had there been a default, the only secure financial instrument in the books of most banks is securities, is treasury, uh, I'm sorry, treasury bills. Everything else is, is worthless. If you take away the value of the treasury bills, even if it's a short-term minimal default, then everyone's going to be scrambling to get paid by everyone else, and then they're all going to find that no one has any liquidity. No one has any right. real money. Yeah, and so, it, it, this is how the system works, by the way. The system yeah. works on the movement of money. It's the velocity of money through a system, and everybody who was one, Economics 101 knows that. If you stop the system, the wheels of the gears of the, of the economic system fly off, and, and, the, and the machine is destroyed. Well, it's all based on leverage, and bar, that's basically borrowing. And the question is, do the banks that are leveraging up, that are creating debt, and, and buying and selling the debt between hedge funds, uh, private equity funds, and, and banks and investment banks, do they have anything secure underneath it? And the most secure 
in, uh, financial instrument they have are treasuries. But if treasuries get downgraded and we go into a default, then everyone's going to start demanding that everyone else make good on their outstanding paper. But just as in September 2008, when Lehman was left holding the bag, Lehman said, but you're all holding crap also. And they all knew it, but uh -huh. they said, yes, but your crap is worse than our crap. Uh -huh. And the difference uh -huh. was, actually, yeah. Richard Fold, the head of Lehman at that point, said, so I'm the schmuck? Meaning everyone's doing this and I'm the one who's getting the blame? Yeah. Let me give you a little metaphor I've used to try to explain what's really going on right now. We have two wolves and we have a bunch of sheep in a sheep pen. And the two wolves are arguing. There's a Republican wolf and there's a Democratic wolf. And they're actually arguing over which recipe to cook the sheep by. And they try to calm the sheep down and say, now, don't worry. We are going to come to a deal on which recipe we will use for dinner. And you'll be very comfortable as you get cooked. Right. And so the fact is, uh, you have to look at this as both parties. When you look at these starey, you know, bulging eyeballs of, of Paul Ryan, saying we really do need austerity fascism, in a sense, he's protecting Wall Street. He's doing what Obama's already been ordered to do from the so-called Democratic side, which is to yeah. cut benefits, raise the age at which you can get your Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, if you do get Obamacare, you're going to find, oh, this is only catastrophic insurance. Everything's out of pocket. And well, if Bill, you let, me, are, let, me, yeah. let me give you an Please example continue. of something. Let me give you an example of something that you'll, you'll get right away, and I hope your listeners will. In hearings a week ago about what could happen if there's no deal, Frank Keating, who's a former FBI agent, then governor of Oklahoma. Now he's the chairman of the American Bankers Association. He was saying the first thing that has to be done is guarantee the money to the banks. He said without financial stability you have nothing. And he said the second thing you have to do is cut all entitlements. And he said that we need to apply a longevity index to Social Security. That is if someone has the, the physical health at 65 or 66 or whatever the retirement age is, so that we know they're going to live a long time, we start cutting their payments immediately. As opposed to someone who might look sick, we won't cut their payments. Now, this idea of a longevity... Whoa, index, this that's is gross. Exact, that's, that's Hitler-style ideas. That's, <clears throat> I saw this in, in Europe last summer when there was a debate on whether it was good or not good for the government to have an anti-smoking campaign. And they said, well, the smoking campaign, not having an anti-smoking campaign is good for two reasons. We need the tax money on the cigarettes, plus a lot of people die younger. So Yeah, they actually have, worked out, the actuaries, that, I've, no, I've seen those articles that worked out the tables and said, it's better financially for people to die quicker, so let's not stop smoking. And, and this is just what Thomas Malthus said in the 1780s when he argued against cleaning up stagnant water because he said stagnant water breeds diseases that will take out larger portions of the poor population, those with worse resistance, and that's a natural selection process. Whoa. So here's where you have Darwinian survival meeting Hitler genocide. And, and, by, and by the way, like, both parties are responsible for this. That's why I use the analogy of the wolves, because... You know, I put out a, pol a plan two weeks ago for what could be done with health care, and it goes beyond, quote, socialized medicine. It's rational. It's American. It will give you privacy. We could repatriate our dollar uh, so our treasury makes it. We have to put Glass-Steagall in first. If we repatriate making money instead of using the Fed Reserve, if we put on tariffs on goods to overseas countries like China and say, if you want to trade with us, you've got to stop polluting us. If you, want, you can't send over toxic goods with melamine in it that's considered a protein substitute. We started doing things like this. We rebuild America. We've had robotic factories here. We'd upgrade our education. We wouldn't have kids with massive debt so they could never own anything, buy a car, or start a family. This is a dead end, what they're building. It's a dead end road. Back in a moment. sitting so I wouldn't fall down from the news that you announced to me on the break. Uh, Harley, please tell us what they are trying to do in Europe. And of course, they want that template to be brought here. Uh, this is beyond shocking. 
This is like well, a financial <laughs> electroshock to the middle class and anybody even with savings or a pension fund. It's craziness. Well, let me, let me give you the background to it, which is the acknowledgement this week that with the German elections over, they're now announcing the real situation with the European banks. They've now established a single banking authority over all countries in Europe, and they want to have a single resolution authority, which means bureaucrats will control the banks of all countries there. Now, these banks are bankrupt. Just as an example, the Spanish and Italian banks are holding 230 billion euros between the two countries of debt that's not going to be paid back by corporations. Now, no one knows how much of the, the government debt is not going to be paid back. No one has any idea how much of the mortgage debt and things of that sort will be paid back. So they're looking at a complete blowout of the banking system. So what came out in France this week was a report that the French Assembly will consider a bill for a 17% across-the-board tax on every citizen. That is not on your income, but on your net wealth. And if you have money in the bank, if you have money in stocks, if you have a pension fund, they're going to take 17% of that if this bill passes. Now, Whoa. when we started looking into that, we saw there was another proposal that came from the Boston Consulting Group, which said that the advanced sector countries, in order to clear up the debt problem, need a 30% tax on everyone's savings, pensions, 401ks, uh, a one-time 30% tax. So if you have $100 in the bank, they would take 30. If you have 100,000, no. they would take 30,000. Now, this is totally coherent with what you and I have been talking about on the bail-in. In other words, the only source of money other than government bailouts is stealing from deposits. Yeah, but and here's an important point I want to I want to insert this important point. If a vampire comes to your home, uh, a week before Halloween and he gets a good blood meal and he says, I'm only doing this once, I won't return. And of course next week it's Halloween and he returns and of course the, we realize the next time he has a blood meal, the patient, the victim is going to die. I don't believe that when they, even if they pass this bill and they got 15 or 30 percent, they wouldn't repeat it until eventually there's no wealth left at all. Well, there's no the way they can point. ever pay these debts off. There's, there's no way to pay the debts off, and, and the only thing they're trying to do is buy some time until they can get a top-down fascist dictatorship so that they can do whatever they have to do to protect the banks. So the line here, this is Obama's line, it's Harry Reid's line, it's McConnell's line, it's Ryan's line. We must have financial stability first. Well, you can't have financial stability unless you put the financial institutions through bankruptcy because there, there's more debt in these financial institutions than in the worst managed household in the country. Now, here's yeah. the second point, and I want your listeners to really get this. People say, well, don't worry, I'm protected. They can't take my money. The FDIC used to guarantee 100000 Now it guarantees 250000 Well, Tom Honig, who's now he's a former Kansas City Federal Reserve president, he's now the deputy director of the FDIC, he said that if one of the two big-to-fail banks fails, whether it's Citibank, Bank of America, any of them, that it would immediately trigger a run on the others, just the way the Lehman collapse triggered a run on everything. And he said under those circumstances, you can forget the FDIC guarantees. The FDIC has somewhere between 25 and $35 billion total assets available to it. One of these banks would have... Two to five to ten trillion dollars that would have to be covered. Now, so, they're going to uh, cover. Uh, they're going to so cover. The metaphor, the, the metaphor is the Walmart effect, uh, like that one where they had a run on the Walmart store. I think it was back in Ohio or back east, where uh, there was a, a scare over these uh, these uh, tickets that they get for food stamps. Uh -huh. Right, and right. so they ran and they literally cleared the shelves. So what you're saying, the same thing could happen. They can say they're going to guarantee a quarter million, but they don't have the money to guarantee that. No, they don't. And so people who are sitting there thinking, well, I have a pension, I have money in the bank, I have a credit card. Look, banks are running, doing what they call gaming. What would happen in a worst-case scenario? One of the things they would do, or two things they would do, is close down the ATM machines 
and cut off credit cards. So what most people think of as a way out or personal protection is just not there. If we don't get this right, and let me, before the break, I just want to get this point across. The way to get it right is with Glass-Steagall, where you say we'll protect the commercial banks, but we're not going to protect the toxic waste. We're not going to protect the bubble. That has to go. And if we did that and made a commitment that we're not going to give any more bailouts to Jamie Dimon, to Lloyd Blankfein, to hedge fund operators, to European banks, because the Federal Reserve is bailing out European banks, if we said that, it's not that we would have a lot of money left over. It's that we would now be able to concentrate on what will produce wealth in the future, which is physical production, which is new credit to industry and to new projects. And that way, we get out of the crisis. If we don't do that, they're like the 30-pound tick on the one-pound dog. That dog doesn't have much of a life. And the American people are the one-pound dog with the 30-pound tick sucking your blood. Well, I got a a note here that was sent to me that uh, dated October 9th, an actual Chase Bank letter, and parts of it are redacted in terms of the officers involved. But it's all it tells you who, the Donna Vieira... Senior Vice President, Chase Business Banking, and it says, you will no longer be able to send international wire transfers. This is starting November 17th in your account. Your cash activity limit to these accounts will be $50,000 per statement cycle per account. In other words, the banks are already doing things in advance of either whether there's a deal or not a deal. So this issue with the two parties and Obama is just another speed bump on the road toward disaster. Well, what we're seeing is uh, con- confetti and fog that they're they're getting everybody all emotional about. Uh, are we serious about cutting the deficit? If you're serious about cutting the deficit, fire the president and get rid of the Congress because their plans for dealing with the deficit are incompetent. They'll never work, and they're just going to make us worse. All well, you have uh, to do me, is, is look at Spain and Portugal and Greece. Let's make a, a short list of what we need to do. Number one, Glass Steagall. Number two, repatriate the actual printing of U.S. dollars. Number three, let these banks go through organized bankruptcy to get rid of the toxic debt. Uh, number four, don't use I, I would say criminal fascism. charges. Criminal charges also instead of fines because yeah. these bankers yeah, exactly. are getting away with these fines. Yeah, they, they need to, they need to go to prison. And we're not talking about a prison where they can play golf or or the bocce ball. You know, on the, on well, the I don't line. care if they play golf, but they should be behind bars. Let them play golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, maybe that'd be good. Um, but either way, they should not be able to be have access to the internet or, or trading stocks or or going on online or doing anything else where they can interact with people like mobsters inside the 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 client, the, uh, the big house, as they say. That's right. Yeah, uh, people don't realize there really is a pathway, but where that window of opportunity before catastrophe happens is coming, and whether they delay it to January or February or next year. Uh, both parties are bringing us to a road that goes nowhere. Welcome back, and we're going to post up this special statement in the magazine The Hill. Uh, Hardy, tell us all about this advertisement and the response and why you're surprised about this actually being posted. Well, We drafted a statement which basically says Obama and the Republicans are running a fraud. The deal will kill you. The deal is for austerity. The deal is to protect Wall Street. And the American people have to reject it. And the only solution is Glass-Steagall, impeachment of Obama, and burning the hides of the congressmen to get them to move in this direction. Now, it's very strong language, and it's very straightforward. It's a statement of reality. And we were a little concerned that the Hill might not run it. But to their credit, they did. And we have about 40 or 50 signers on it. Uh, The first signer is Lyndon LaRouche, who who issued the statement. But it also includes some legislators from around the country, mayors, city councilmen. We didn't have a lot of time to pull the signers together. But the important thing is the Hill goes to every congressional office. Its uh, print copy goes out in 20,000, has 20,000 subscribers. And then it has 63,000 subscribers on its Internet version. And I think you can go to thehill.com and uh, get a copy. Uh, you have to wait till tomorrow to get the Internet version, but it should have a LaRouche Pack ad on uh, Obama and Congress are out to kill you. 
And the yeah, important- and, and people need to realize this is like I mentioned about the two foxes or wolves actually deciding on which recipe to cook the sheep. The fact is, neither party has your interest at hand, and they cannot save the debt. If you talk about the 17% where they're deciding to go after 70% of your accumulated wealth, even the value of your home in Europe, and they want to do this here, the Cypriotization of our financial system. Written well, this, is what the- happened with, this is what happened with the pension heist in Detroit, where the, the courts have still not ruled on it yet. It's still in the court, but where the bankruptcy lawyer worked out a deal to turn over 15% of the city's annual revenue to pay a very questionable debt for credit default swaps that the city was forced to purchase as insurance on a loan they took, but cut the pensions down to, I think, between 10 and 20 cents on the dollar. And I, I just so you really understand that we're talking about killing people, a Detroit, the average Detroit pension is between 20 and $22,000 a year. Now, if you cut that down by 80%, you're talking about giving them $4,000 or so a year. And that, you figure out not, what that is a month. How do you live on $360 a month? Because they don't have Social well, Security. Get, uh, they could stack them in reefer cars and just freeze them. <laughs> well, this is exactly... That's the only way you can of- afford that. I mean, you wouldn't be alive, but you wouldn't be to- technically dead, as we say in trauma medicine. You're not dead until you're warm and dead, so we could literally put them into, you know, freezer, you know. Maybe there's some, some future date we could resurrect these people and their cells wouldn't burst and they wouldn't be technically dead. But that's the only way you're going to survive on that kind of pension. I mean, come on. Right, and, and this is why we're saying that with a deal, what are you going to get with a deal? They're already saying that the deal includes further cuts in Medicare and Medicaid on top of what Obamacare is doing to the health industry. Oh, yeah, it's going to destroy it. And we're we're talking about, you know, I'm against the use of of polypharmacy for for chronic health conditions when we still allow toxic things in our food like genetically modified gluten, GMO foods, and toxic chemicals and fluoridated water, toxic stacked vaccines. But the good parts of medicine, imaging and trauma and everything, they're going to cut the guts out of the good parts of medicine. And when you want to have an emergency procedure, you worry about a trauma center and they're flying in by helicopter. Sorry, that center was closed. We've got to go another 100 miles. And there's a, there's a backlog because there's so many other people with gunshot wounds and other traumas. Your relative, yourself, may bleed out before you get in an operating room. That's what I'm and talking about. These are kind of, that's, yeah. that's already happening, Dr. Deagle, where they're... they're <clears throat> Cities that are, are served by, like the city of Los Angeles now, for a huge portion of the population, when King Drew Hospital was uh, shut down, uh, that sent everything over to USC uh, Medical Center, the USC General Hospital, which right. can have a two-day wait in the emergency room. If you're not hemorrhaging blood, they make you sit there. And you know, the supposedly yeah. Obamacare was to address the emergency problem, but you know, they're, they're well, now a lot of the people that end up in emergency don't have a primary doctor and don't have any way of getting what we call real preventive right. care. And they have no but insurance. They, they, we know what they call those. Those patients are called gomers. Get out of my emergency room. Yeah, instead of goners. You know the. Oh, there's some goners. Time- well, Obamacare yeah. is designed to, to actually be used in Asia, and then the death panels. I had the right. latest I heard is they have they they go from. When you reach a certain age, they send you all these documents, Obamacare, getting you to decide on end-of-life care and making sure you don't decide and do not resuscitate orders, etc., and recommending you have actually discussion uh, with people about how you want to end your life. Well, and then they have, that- they call it memory care, by the way, when you start right. to lose your marbles, and then they go from memory care to the hospices where you just get a bathtub of narcotics so you stop breathing and you stop having any desire to live because you're in a narcotized state. This is what Obamacare is bringing. It's worse than Nazi Germany. Here's here's another thing that was in the New York Times yesterday, that where people, there's there's somewhere between 9 and 20 million people who are not going to be covered by anything in Obamacare. The doctors are going to give you what's called a medical credit card. This is this started with veterinarians, and what they do is they'll go ahead and give you the procedure, but it'll be charged on a card, no interest for six months, and then high interest after six months. And the New York Times admitted that what this would do is put people in permanent debt, because if you're talking, you could have, there are some surgeries that are even just two or three days that are thirty, forty thousand dollars 40000 Now, you start getting 12%, 14% interest on that. 
And it's an, another form, and by the way, it's Wells Fargo Bank, which is underwriting these medical credit cards. So this is the companion well, uh, to Obamacare. Yeah. yeah, and of course, Wells Fargo Bank is another glo- globalist Illuminati bank uh, system. Another so too big to fail bank. Yeah, yeah. Another, oh, actually, they, there's actually a new term, it's the too big, too big to jail bank. Yeah. Well, we, we have to jail these banks. We have to shut them down. And we have to have... Look, I, I can tell you from traveling around the country and, and doing meetings in various parts of the country, people are angry. They're frustrated. They're looking for solutions. They don't well, we trust have solutions. the Congress. We have solutions. We talk well, solutions all the time. I was going to say, there, there are solutions. And the question is giving up your illusions, your, your hope that somehow I can escape this, somehow someone will come up with a solution. It's got to be the American people that do it. And we did stop, here's the other point, we stopped Obama from having an unconstitutional war in Syria. Now we have to stop him from his unconstitutional war against America. And by the way, we have both parties and all of the different segments of the parties collaborating in this mess. It's not just a Republican or Democratic issue. They are steering us from the left and the right toward an eventual it's Wall goal. Street. Yeah, it's a it's Wall run Street. From the top. Uh, uh, yeah, run from the top to give us a sturdy fascism, steal our wealth, steal our health. Then, when they give us memory care after we reach a certain age, we've signed documents. That, by the way, now that Doctor Death has been certified by the state to kill you, or they put you in these various death panels, or withdraw care, or just don't provide it. And by the way, they don't really want to solve any underlying health problems. If you've got copper deficiency, which can cause heart failure, if you've got a vitamin E deficiency, if you've got magnesium low, don't worry about that in the cause of diabetes or heart failure. Don't worry about real causes of healthy conditions like toxins in your food, air, and water. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna give you minimal care, mostly basically catastrophic only, and it's gonna be very low quality. And uh, you're gonna be in a lineup. It'll be like the Department of Motor Vehicles healthcare system. And, and it will you know, be unaffordable. That's not good. It'll be unaffordable, well, here's, here's, it'll be catastrophic, final, and it'll the bankrupt point you. On, the final point on this, there were people who were hanged at Nuremberg after World War II, the Nazi doctors who followed through with this kind of program, what Obama's doing. And people say, oh, that's over the top, you're over the top. I think many people who used to say LaRouche was, was too extreme on this have come around to realize that we're dealing with an absolutely insane president, a completely immoral and corrupt Congress, and it's up to the people to change it. Exactly. Yeah, that's why Mr. Obama looks so cool through all this. He's insane. That's the secret. He's not just greedy, he's insane. Amazing. Wow. So they got a deal, all right. They figured out a recipe for the sheep. Welcome back to the uh, Nutramedical Report. And um, Harley will be back next week. He has to fly off early. Um, but I want to just uh, read one of the articles here that <clears throat> is the announcement that was up in the... Um, on the Daily News on the Hill. And it says, uh, pass Glass-Steagall now. And I'll just read a portion of it. Welcome your calls and questions on this and other issues, because to summarize, I think what we're going to be facing here, <clears throat> they're going to try to um, calm the public and, and the nervous or twitchy international financial markets. But the real issue is the underlying problem is not being fixed. It's like putting a Band-Aid on somebody because they bump their knee and they have multicentric uh spreading cancer and their platelet count has dropped and they're actually starting to have a disseminated intervascular coagulopathy which means they're bleeding going to bleed shortly from every orifice and the system right now is it can be fixed easily it really isn't that big a problem but it means things like glass steagall it means things like repatriating our printing of money it means firing all of the characters both uh, in the district of criminal in the president's office he needs to be impeached the senate and the Republicans, by the way, the Republicans that tell us we need a balanced budget now when you have previous commitments, they're insane. It's like taking out a loan for a car or for furniture or appliances and saying, well, we don't want to pay it anymore. We don't think it's right. Well, you already have a commitment. And you have a commitment not only to our veterans to pay their checks, but also to senior citizens who actually, this is a separate thing. The government took their money and gave the people that paid into Social Security ILUs. So we have a situation now. We've been paying interest to an international non-U.S. agency, the Federal Reserve, 
We've been borrowing now 46 cents on the dollar, and under Obama, the debt has doubled. They didn't control the cost of health care when they introduced this plan. As I said, if I introduced my plan, it would be a simplification of health care. We get rid of all the electronic medical records going back to the government. It would get rid of malpractice, get rid of state licensure, have national licensure. Through non-government organizations, <clears throat> we would have the primary care doctors in each county controlling health care, including all the big hospital systems. We'd get rid of redundancy. We have multiple redundant scanners and other things when they're underutilized, and other places have virtually no services. We would make sure that reasonable salaries would be paid, but not insane, that people wouldn't be, doctors would, if they get sick or older, could still work part-time, including women who want to have children. Uh, we'd have a system that would work better as a team. It would be a team approach rather than as a approach where we're hiring engineers to turn bolts kind of approach. Well, let's look at this article. It's time for Congress to break with the Wall Street bankers, their stooges in the White House, and the stooges on Capitol Hill. Recently, Democratic and Republican congressmen and senators mobilized to prevent Obama from launching an unconstitutional war in Syria without congressional authorization. Now, where are the patriotic Democrats and Republicans who will act to defend the U.S. population, the general welfare against Wall Street? Where are the Democrats and Republicans who have the courage and commitment described by John F. Kennedy in his Profiles in Courage book? Franklin Roosevelt threw the money changers out of the temple by signing Glass-Steagall into law. And, of course, you remember Jesus threw the money changers out of the temple. Um, there are bills in both houses of Congress to reenact Glass-Steagall. Who will be today's Glass-Steagall? Not uh, just when nothing is at stake, but under political combat conditions. Who is really serious about the future of the nation? It's not enough to lend one's name to a co-sponsor to a bill to reenact Glass-Steagall, and it's necessary to cut through the fog of war, not be distracted, not to be diverted by the counter moves of the enemy, in this case, Wall Street. <clears throat> and, of course, Wall Street met with Obama giving his marching orders just a week and a half ago. So the situation is uh, way out of control. It's, I, I, I would describe the so-called plan, even if it works, to stop the nervousness as a road to nowhere plan. Uh, this is a definitely a road to nowhere. Uh, and people need to understand that. The road to nowhere is going to get a lot nastier. Uh, the um, Wall Street's parasitical speculation activity is a cancer in the body politic and needs to be removed. If they simply pass gas deagles, start repatriating money, get rid of the toxic debt, which basically takes it off the books, uh, allow them to start building, re building infrastructure, don't saddle young people with giant debts when they go to school if they're qualified and need to get educated. Why do you think in countries like China, they graduate more engineers in Beijing alone than all our PhDs and engineers together? What do they think is going to allow us to have a vibrant long-term economy? It's an intellectual property in our young people, in their minds and their abilities to manage a 21st century economy where robotic factories, literally limitless energy, uh, transportation, non-polluting systems, and a sustainable world that doesn't chew up all the world's oxygen, thinking that the abiotic fuel of using carbon-based fuels can, is, has a limitless supply. There's a amount of stretch. You can increase it quite a bit, and the world will just put up more oxygen, but not if you poison the oceans and you cut down the forests, which are the lungs of the world. So the peak oxygen issue says, yes, there's some stretch, but with the growth of industry and the population, we need to realize to have sustainable a development, we need to have limitless energy that doesn't consume oxygen. And uh, as a great proportion, not all of it, but a great proportion of our industry. We also need to realize if we're going to have a vibrant population, we need to have a healthy population that doesn't have debts come due by getting sick. And the solution isn't to take their wealth or to put them in death panels or give them what's called memory care. It's to uh, move toward a uh, an idea that maybe the solution is to maintain wisdom so people in 150 can still run races, play chess, play with their great-grandchildren, uh, do sailing. Our great-great-grandchildren take their 10th trip around the world, take their 12th PhD, uh, have dynastic wealth, which actually will build up the country, and have wisdom so that there's special offices in the government like there are in the country of Georgia where only two people can sit there because they have to be 100 years of old age or older, where one in 35 people are 100 years or older in Georgia compared to one in 3,500 in our country. And of course it's dropping because with increased pollution, 
with aspartame, with stack vaccines. Uh, we're not seeing the extension of human lifespan. We're seeing the squaring of the curve. People are being kept alive in a very degraded state in intensive care units, but now with the cost of health care rising, Obama's plan and the plan of the globalists to actually terminate them quickly, dispatch them with inadequate care, or the lack of innovative care that will prevent their deterioration of things like stem cell therapies, uh, we call functional quantum medicine, which I'll be writing and releasing my first book here shortly. It'll be an ebook. And uh, the fact is, we have solutions for virtually every issue that keeps us within budget, that distributes the power to us and not to central control, uh, that keeps strong nations. <clears throat> As it says in the Bible, the world will be a, uh, strong nations, not a globalist state that dictates to all the nations through corporations. And that's what we have now. We have a corporatist, globalist Earth Inc. with 10 zones being built, which is why next month they're having the NERC trial. November 13th, 14th, right at the time where they're kind of massaging us with a false information that a CME will knock out our power grid when they did nothing since 1989 to harden the grid. We're seeing nothing done to solve the problem with Fukushima Daiichi. It's a perfect example of the way that the globalists treat us. They think of this as a wonderful thing, just like the open, uh, you know, pits of standing water that... Uh, the Malthusians thought it was a great idea to get rid of the weaker populations by destroying their immune system. Well, nothing better than to not solve the problem of Fukushima Daiichi. And uh, they have a massive collapse of the sardine population of the west coast of Canada around Vancouver. And of course, no one's talking about this either. They're not talking about how the hump humpback whales are rarely seen now. They suddenly say something changed. Well, what about all the seal lions? Lion, you know, the sea lion pops. Here off the coast of California, I can tell you when we went down just uh, oh, a few weeks ago to Ensenadas, usually you can hear the er, er, er sounds of all of the sea lions. There wasn't one er. It was just the silence was deafening. And we've been down there many times. So it's only 70 miles south of the U.S.-Mexican border. <clears throat> and I can tell you uh, the fact that the oceans are being poisoned and we have nothing being done means they mean to kill us by inaction, by action such as Obamacare, which is not really what I call real rational health care, uh, by literally bailing in our money and our wealth and even our home values, as Harley talked about in the previous segments. You need to realize this is a road to nowhere, and both parties don't get a 53% vote or 27% vote. They get a 100% vote that they're all wrong. They won't do the things that need to be done to get rid of the debt, repatriate our money printing procedures, disconnect from the corporate dictators and the bankers that tell us to know they're too big to jail banks. We need to start changing our ways or we'll be seeing what we decried in the Nuremberg trials of Germany is happening before our eyes again because people forget. As it says, those who forget history are doomed to repeat it.